Bingo, we're back. The three o'clock rock. This is special, though. This is Community Matters, and the, uh, the topic is, uh, is it time for a change in city administration? And, and guess what? Our guest is Charles DeJew, candidate for mayor. Thanks for coming down, Charles. Thank you very much Great for having me over here. here. Yes, no, my pleasure here, Jay. Yes. We want to explore where you stand on things yeah. and, uh, you know, and, and uh, let the people understand more mm -hmm. about you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess the first question is, uh, you sent out a press release this morning about debates. Can we yeah. talk about the status of debates <laughs> yeah. in the city in the city race? Well, you know, Jay, on, on one level, this debate about debates is a little silly. I mean, it, 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 let's actually talk about issues here. But very briefly on this issue of debates, last week the mayor issued a press release calling for debates. I agreed with him and said, let's debate. And then Olello suggested a televised debate and actually suggested three dates, October 4th, 19th, I think it was the 21st. I accepted and I said, I'll do any one of these dates. But then the mayor declined. <laughs> so it was a little ironic, a little hypocritical in my opinion, that the mayor last week said he wanted a live televised debate and this week when offered the opportunity immediately declined a live televised debate that he just called for. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there, Jay. I mean, the bigger thing here is, is what's going on at City Hall, and we have a lot of problems, a lot of issues here that really need to be confronted, tackled, and we let's, need to Let's try to cover them. Uh, sure. Now, you've been sure. around. Uh, you were a city council member mm -hmm. for quite some time, mm -hmm. uh, and you served in Congress mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you're, you're back now yeah. looking for the mayor's job, mm -hmm. um, and maybe ultimately you'd be looking for another state job. Who oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. All right. I, I wanted to know, to know, so now I know. Um, so let's talk about what qualifies you to run for this mm -hmm. office. Well, you know, Jay, I mean, I guess at some nominal level, I mean, you've pointed out some of the qualifications I have. I've served in the legislature, served in the city council, served in the United States Congress. Uh, I've also served in the army. I'm an Afghan war veteran. Uh, so on, on, on a nominal level, I guess those qualifications make me qualified to be mayor. But I think much more important than the previous offices I have served, for me, what qualifies me to be mayor is a passionate care for this community. Uh, you know, uh, my wife and I consider ourselves very, very blessed that we were able to grow up here on Oahu, privileged that we can raise our children here on Oahu. But we want our kids to be able to stay here. Mm. And we're very troubled and mm. concerned about the direction of our government. You know, I don't want our Honolulu to become a community of only for the well-off and the well-connected. I want our community to be a community that my wife and I recognize for my children for generations still to come. And right now, with all these problems we have, with homelessness, with a lack of ethics, with these problems with the rail system, if we don't correct these issues and problems right now, I'm very much afraid that we're not going to have that Honolulu that I grew up knowing and loving for my kids. Can you connect that up for me with the phenomenon we see nationally and mm -hmm. clearly mm -hmm. at a state level and a city level about, uh, you know, the millennials becoming disconnected, mm -hmm. the public becoming mm -hmm. disconnected, yeah. the very low rate of turnout we yeah. have, the fact that people are not informed and don't care to be informed yeah. or involved yeah. in government at any yeah. level. What, what, yeah. what, what's happening here? You know, uh, Jay, you... you um, point out a major problem that's going on in, in politics, I mean, first, generally, nationally, that Americans are feeling increasingly disconnected from their government. Uh, and then, of course, here, it is especially pronounced in our community that Hawaii, we have the lowest voter participation rate of any state in the United States of America, and that's wrong. But I think a lot of the reason why you're seeing this increasing disconnect between the people and their government nationally, and especially pronounced here locally, is because there's a fundamental lack of trust any longer between the public and their government officials. That they see too often government officials promising and saying one thing and doing another. For example, with the mayor's campaign where he promised in the last election that he would build rail better, that rail would be fully paid for, that it would be built on time and on budget. And he even promised that he would create 10,000 new jobs with the rail system. And the public sees that, Here's the mayor promises, and then now he sees him running for re-election, having broken every single one of those promises. And people, I think, are disappointed. They are frustrated. And I think a lot of people are just checking out because of that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Jay, the reason I'm running and the reason I am here is because I don't believe that we as a community, we as a people, we as a nation, should just have to sit here and accept that tragic status quo. I believe that in a democracy, we can change it. We have the power to change that breakdown in trust. And the way we do it is not by staying at home and sitting on your couch and doing nothing. The way you change it is by going out and voting and voting for change, voting for the government that we deserve. You know, yesterday, uh, John Y. Hay was one of our mm -hmm. hosts, uh, had Richard Bereka on. Mm -hmm. 
And one of the questions was, uh, you know, we, we have this disenchantment going on. Uh, mm -hmm. How do we fix it? And uh, I'm sure there's a long answer and a short answer, but yeah. the short answer that Richard Barreca gave was, uh, well, you answer their questions. Mm -hmm. when, when the public has a question, answer it. Yeah. Answer it honestly. Yes. Um, how do you feel yes. about that? Yeah. I completely agree with, with, with Richard's statement. I, I think there's too much of politics these days is about what's called this word spin. Uh, it's rather than answering a question directly when answer ask straight, instead of getting a straight answer, you're given political spin. And it's all about manufacturing how you look on the 6 o'clock news or how you appear in the morning newspapers. And that's wrong. It's causing a level of disenchantment between the, the people and their government here. And we have got to change that. And again, I, I think what you see going on here specifically in Honolulu, whether it's rail, whether it's homelessness, whether it's ethics, you see that, that increasing disconnect here about what the elected officials are saying, but then what people observe on the ground directly. Okay, uh, you know, on, on, on subjects, um, on issues, yeah. uh, I'd like to preface my question with the fact that when I went to law school, mm -hmm. Uh, city government was all about infrastructure. Yeah. You know, it was constitutionally from the mm -hmm. very beginning. Mm -hmm. It's about police, it's about fire, mm -hmm. it's about water, it's about mm -hmm. infrastructure, mm -hmm. roads, bridges, yep. that kind of thing. Yeah. That is what city government is all about. Yes. Do you agree, and how do you feel we have done? I completely agree. You know, Jay, I, I served on the city council for seven years, and the way I describe it to people is, of all the levels of government, federal, state, and city government, your city government is the one that's the closest to you. And this is what I mean. You can go a full day and never interact with your, your federal government, which deals with foreign policy, national security, monetary policy. You can go to a full day and never interact with your state government, which deals with agriculture, uh, health and welfare. And if you don't have kids, you don't interact with the public schools. But it is very difficult to go a full day and never use a toilet, wash your hands, get on a road. Uh, the city government touches you from the time you wake up until the time you go to sleep. And a good city government is a city government that I view it as sort of hums quietly, effectively, and efficiently in the background, allowing you as a citizen to do what it is that you want to do, uh, whether it's with your job or if you're a retiree, doing what you enjoy. That's what a good city government should be doing. Our failure here today in the city and county of Honolulu is that this is clearly breaking down. We have major problems here. First, to start with, of course, our city parks are breaking down. We have a major problem with homelessness and that so many of our parks are unsafe. Mm. We have a basic problem with trust and ethics in our government, that the people do not trust the mayor and do not trust the government to do the right thing. And of course, the 800-pound gorilla out there is this multi-billion dollar rail project that was promised to us to only cost $5 billion and promised to us to be fully completed by the year 2019. And it's today billions over budget, years behind schedule, and just utterly and incompetently mismanaged. We have a city government that is just simply not doing what it should be doing. It is not taking care of the basics, trying to do flashy projects, and then the flashy projects it's trying to do is doing very, very poorly. I think we can all agree there's yeah. big problems here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, were you to win this <laughs> office, uh, you will inherit uh, yes. very big problems. <laughs> yeah, I see, Jay, let me, let me just share with you here. You know, I, I, I sometimes half joke, but only half joke. The problem with running for mayor is you could win. <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> so we're going to take a short break, Charles. Yeah. When we come back, I'd like to tackle these things one at a time. Sure. And guess what? The first one will be red. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back after this short break. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi and you can catch me on Mondays at 11 on Think Tech Hawaii. Stacy to the rescue. See you then. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state, as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. One. 
Bingo, we're back here on Community Matters with our honored guest, uh, Charles DeJew, candidate for mayor. We're talking about, is it a time for change in the city administration? And we promised you that when we would come back, we would talk about some of these infrastructure problems mm -hmm. and the biggest one, uh, yes. you called it a gorilla, and I couldn't possibly disagree <laughs> with that. It is indeed a gorilla. Yes. Um, you know, we've had, we've had issues with this mm -hmm. since it was raised in the mm -hmm. Henneman administration back mm -hmm. when about, um, you know, a candid discussion mm -hmm. of it with the people mm -hmm. and trying to get real buy-in, mm -hmm. and that's really never happened, yes. sorry to say. Yeah. So where are we now? What's yeah. your position, your platform yeah. on rail, yeah. Charles? You know, Jill, you hit, Jay, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, this project is a complete and total mess. You know, I, I had an opportunity to talk to a consulting engineer on the rail project, and, and he chatted with me on the condition I not use his name, and he shared with me that this Honolulu rail project is going to be in every engineering textbook in America for decades <laughs> to come as an example of how not to ever do transit ever again like this. But no, uh, our community stuck between a rock and a hard place. We are in a bad position and it's just simply getting worse. Um, we have to complete this project. The Federal Transit Administration has made a very clear ruling. If we try to change anything on this, we're going to have to give all of the federal monies back, the one and a half billion dollar federal commitment, and we don't have that money. It would trigger a massive tax increase that will hurt so many families. But we shouldn't just simply sit here and accept the mismanagement and the incompetence that has gone on for the last four years with this current administration. So Jay, this is what I think we need to do. Four things. Number one, it is critically important that we rebuild the level of confidence in this project. The feds don't trust the city, the state doesn't trust the city, even the city council and the mayor don't trust one another. We've got to restore a level of confidence. How do you do that? And the way you do that here is, is you've got to change the management staff. You know, I describe it to folks as it's a lot like, you know, our UH football team. Last year we went 0-8 in conference play. Um, this year, we were 0 and 2. I mean, 2 and 0. Uh, we were undefeated. That's only two games, but I'll take it so far. <laughs> but the difference between the, co the, the, the teams between last year and this year is the coaching staff. We got to replace the coaching staff on rail, and it starts with the head coach, the mayor. Number two, you have my word that if I'm elected mayor, the first thing, my first official act as mayor would be sign an executive order instructing that an independent outside audit of the rail system be done. It is important that the public understand. Where did all of our money go? But equally important to figure out how much is it really going to cost to finish this thing? You know, I started running for office, uh, for this uh, mayor's office, uh, back in June. And I calculated here, it's averaged approximately every 15 to 20 days, the price of this rail system has changed. Every 15 to 20 days. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. We need to end this, this, f this business with funny numbers and really explain to the public really, truly, what is the bottom line. Number three. Let's recognize here, and let's be honest with the people. This project has been mismanaged, and we're broke. We're out of money. We need more financial resources. The first place we should be going to is not to ask the people to take more money from them. The first place we should be going is back to the legislature and say it's time to end the state's skim of the excise tax. What a lot of people don't realize is the half percent increase in the general excise tax, the first 10 percent off the top, is taken by the state government for pork barrel projects spent around the state has nothing to do with rail. That's at least half a billion dollars over 10 years that is, should be for rail, but is being taken for something else. Time to end that. It was a mistake for the administration not to have asked for that in the last legislative session. If elected mayor, I'm going to demand that be returned as it should be to the rail system. And number four, Jay, I do think the time has come to put impact fees and ask for the developers around the rail transit stops, the landowners around there. The TOD yes, areas? to pay for this. The city has not asked for one penny from any of the developers around the rail stops. And they have, they're making hundreds of millions of dollars in profit. Not, and I'm not against them making a profit. I'm not against them making money. But I don't think it's unfair for our city government, for our taxpayers, to ask these, these landowners, these developers here, who are making enormous profit, to chip in to pay for the cost of the rail system, which is making them such enormous profit. Mm -hmm. Before we talk about any sort of tax increase or taking more money from the people, this is what we absolutely need to do. Because Jay, the problem with this rail system isn't the people. It's not whether or not the people are willing to give money to the system. We've already given $7 billion of our tax money for what was supposed to be a $5 billion system. The problem with this rail system is mismanagement, and we've got to fix the mismanagement, and it starts with getting a new mayor. 
Okay, Charles, but yeah. where are we going with this? Are we mm -hmm. going to Waikiki, to Ala Moana? Mm -hmm. Are we going to the university? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we going to Middle Street? Are we going to the airport? Mm -hmm. Where are we mm -hmm. going? Because those, that yes. decision mm -hmm. will determine how much it will ultimately yeah. cost. You know, the, the Federal Transit Administration has, has put our community in sort of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. And the FTA's ruling has made it very clear to take this rail system, if you change anything, you change the route, you change the technology, you change the terminus point here, you've got to give back all the federal funds that we don't have anymore. So Isn't that unreasonable? Well, uh, you know, I think it was a result of horrible negotiation between the mayor's office and the FTA. Mm -hmm. If I'm elected mayor, I would love the opportunity to op reopen negotiations and explore that uh, possibility of changing mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But until that time comes, we're in this straitjacket. And that straitjacket says termination at all Moana shopping center. And so that's where it is. Now, uh, uh, Waikiki, uh, University of Hawaii, I think are, are, are nice to have visions long, long term in the future, but right now that's not realistic. We don't have the money even barely to get to Ala Moana. Let's fix this mismanagement problems. Let's end this incompetence here. Let's do this system right. And before we talk about going down other paths here that, that really put our community in an even bigger hole than it already are right now. So the first thing you would do is you do the plan as it presently exists, mm -hmm. and then worry about getting better yes. management and uh, developing. Better management, let's audit it, figure out the numbers here. Yeah. Let's make sure we change out the management staff here. Yeah. And less, yes, let's end the scam. And yes, let's, let's get some more contributions from those developers. That's where we start. Because you know, Jay, the alternative uh, that has been offered by the incumbent is to just raise taxes. Just go out at people and take take yeah. more of their money. Yeah. I think that's wrong, and let me explain to you why. You know, the problem with this system here is, is again, it's not the people. The people aren't the ones here at fault. The problem here is the incompetence and the mismanagement with this system. And I describe it to people in this fashion. Have you ever written a blank check? I mean, have you ever given anybody in your lifetime a blank check? Have you given your mother a blank check? No, I um, have not. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Law school will help me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Neither have I. I've never given anybody a blank check. Now, if you've never written anybody a blank check in your entire life, not even your mother, why would you give the city rail system, which has been so grossly mismanaged, a blank check, mm -hmm. an unlimited tax increase? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense at all to me. Here. Let's talk about tax policy yeah. because, it, you know, it's not only rail that is yeah. dropping the bottom out on our future. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, for example, roadways, highways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the uh, EPA re requirement uh, for cleaning up the yeah. sewage in yes. Waikiki. Yes. Uh, there are many, many uh, unliquidated mm -hmm. liabilities mm -hmm. that the city and mm -hmm. the state, but that's yeah. not our discussion today, yeah. um, you know, we'll, we'll have mm -hmm. to pay or mm -hmm. arrange to pay. How, how are we going to clean up our fiscal problems, yeah. which are, everybody agrees, yeah. huge, yes, yes. not just rail? Yes, yes. You're exactly right, Jay. It is more than just rail. You know, what I want to convey to all of your viewers is I have built my entire political career on fiscal responsibility, about minding the store, about making sure that when you give your hard-earned money to the government, we spend it wisely, that I spend the tax money as if I'm spending my family's own money. The difficulty I have with local government so frequently is, is that good projects and good ideas always come before the government. The natural reaction is, is well, sure, just go ahead and fund it. The problem is, is if you just keep on funding and funding and funding every single good idea out there with no priorities, with no sense of fiscal responsibility, before you know it, you're, you have exploding budget deficits, missed priorities here, and a budget that just simply doesn't work. You know, as the saying goes, uh, the problem with government spending is that sooner or later you run out of other people's money. <laughs> yeah. So what I want your viewers to know and understand here is, is that it's easy to play Santa Claus and just fund every good project, every good idea there is out there. It is much harder, however, to be a responsible leader who prioritizes government's funding, who understands that every dollar that the government spends comes from a family. That's the kind of leader that I want to be as mayor of the city and county of Honolulu. Somebody who does prioritize, who does understand that the city government needs to take care of the basics, as you pointed out, public safety, our roadways, our water, to making sure a sewer system comes into compliance with the Clean Water Act. Take care of those basics here. And then all the other flashy stuff, well, if we can still afford it, great. But if we can't, let's put those aside for another day until we take care of the basics in our city government.
Yeah. yeah. Well, can we talk about traffic for a minute? Yeah. Joe? I think rail kind of sucked all the oxygen yeah. out of our effort to fix yeah. the roads. Yes. And they haven't yes. been fixed. Yes. And they need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens in rail, they mm -hmm. need to be fixed. Rail yes. is not going to solve the traffic yeah. problem. So how would you solve the traffic problem? Yeah. Well, okay, let me first start talking about roads, uh, which you had raised here. You know, taking care of our roadways is one of those basics. It's, it's like brushing your teeth. Uh, I mean, any mayor needs to take care of that just fundamental basic. I think one of the concerns our community has is, is that while we've been repaving a lot of roads, we've been repairing a lot of hot potholes, there was a good uh, expose story in the Honolulu Star Advertiser a few months ago that a lot of it has been rushed. We did a lot of quantity, but not a lot of quality. And that is, we repaired this, but a year, two years, three years later, the same pothole reappears. I think as mayor, my priority will be that we fix it, and we fix it right the first time. Mm. So that when you get a job done, yes, it is more expensive to repair a pothole the right way. It takes a lot longer, and you don't repair as much. But you don't have to go back again and again and again. And that's what my focus will be. Now, in terms of traffic, rail, of course, is part of the traffic issue. But for me as mayor, my longer term vision to help address the traffic. And there's a lot of little things we can do here and there. I'm going to be happy to talk about expanding roads, it, uh, changing turns, and directionals of uh, our roadways in town. Yep. But I think really the big solution over the long term, and what's something that I'm committed to if elected mayor, is to expand Kapolei commercial uh, aspect of it. You know, when we originally envisioned the second city way back in the 1980s, it was a great concept of creating a, a second city on Oahu, uh, creating a, a Orange County of Oahu, so to speak, compared to Los Angeles County in Southern California. The residential aspect of Kapolei has actually come in. Uh, 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 Eva Beach, and you see all those new subdivisions coming in. We got the houses in. We haven't gotten the commercial in, however. Commercial has not developed in the same fashion as we had originally hoped it would 30 years ago. So my priority as mayor will be, over the long term here, it's not that I'm against development, it's that we have to direct our development in the right way, in the right fashion. And the priority for traffic, but also for the long term future of our city, is more commercial development in Kapolei. Mm. A real second city. Yes, make it a real city. So that people not just live out there, yeah. but they also work out there. How do you do that, Charles? That's not yeah. so easy. Yeah. Motiv motivating people and businesses mm. to change their conduct is yeah. not so easy. No, you're, you're, you're right. It is not so easy. It is not so easy. But you know, that's one of the things that the city does have power and control over, which is zoning and planning. Mm. And, and when zone changes come through, you know, the mayor can always put a thumb on the scale and rush it along or slow it down and really carefully scrutinize it. And so what I want your viewers to understand is that commercial development, uh, uh, getting more jobs to locate out in Kapolei is something that will be a priority for my administration. It is something that I will push to get in. But more residential, not, again, not that I'm opposed to it, and I'm not saying I'm opposed to more residential development, but I do think it deserves more scrutiny over on the west side because so many people who are living on the west side have to deal and tackle with this traffic because they're living out there but then have to take a long commute into town. I'd rather see them be able to live out there and work out there. Mm. You know, uh, Kaka'ako is obviously yeah. a state, the state area, yeah. and Kaka'ako at the same time mm. represents the, the direction of our city mm. uh, in terms of mm -hmm. quality of life mm -hmm. and quality of the relationship mm -hmm. between the citizen and the, and mm -hmm. the, the physical community yeah. in which we live. Uh, a lot of people feel that architecturally and infrastructure-wise, mm -hmm. Uh, they can't be proud of this city. They cannot be proud of it. Mm -hmm. We've left too much mm -hmm. undone. Um, how can you make people proud mm -hmm. of being in Honolulu? Mm -hmm. How can you make people enjoy and find a quality mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. such that they don't leave for the mainland yeah. uh, by redesigning and by re-envisioning mm -hmm. our city? Mm -hmm. You know, Jay, let me respond to that on a couple of points here. First on, on Kakako, just very, very briefly. I think the time has come to end HCDA, or at least end HCDA as it relates to Kakako. What a lot of your viewers might not be familiar with is the entire reason HCDA was created back in the 70s was then Mayor uh, Frank Fossey and, and Governor Ariyoshi had a little dispute between one another. HCDA was created to try and mediate that dispute. That was nice back in the 70s. I think today in the 21st century it doesn't work. I think time has come to put HCDA under the jurisdiction of the city government and have city planners, city zoning take control and end a lot of these problems we've had specifically in Kaka'ako. Now, to answer your larger question in terms of how do you make Hawaii, how do you make Honolulu a livable, exciting city here? You know, Jay, this is actually something that, if I'm fortunate to get elected mayor, 
we are blessed with, with so many resources here. Honolulu isn't like Minneapolis or Boston or, or Buffalo or something like that. We have wonderful natural resources here. We have a beautiful environment. We have our beaches. To make it a healthy, vibrant, growing city, what the city needs to do is just take advantage of what is already naturally there. And that's why it is so important that we have a mayor who prioritizes making sure we have clean, safe parks throughout the island of Oahu. Public spaces. Public spaces here, yes. I want, I want every kid to be able to feel comfortable going to the dozens upon dozens of city parks, beach parks all around our island here to take care of and watch and enjoy our beautiful natural environment. And the, the tragedy I think we see going on right now with the city government is so much of the city's focus has been on just Al Moana Beach Park and Thomas Square. Granted, both are very important parks in the city center. I myself enjoy both of those parks. I don't want to neglect them. But we cannot have a city government that looks at just those two parks, focus all of its resources on just those parks, to the neglect of all of the hundreds of other parks throughout our community, from the windward side to the west side to the north shore. We want a mayor who knows, recognizes, and understands that Hawaii truly is a beautiful, magical, blessed place. And we take advantage of all of it here, not just in a few areas. On quality of life, mm -hmm. of course, multimodal yeah. transportation comes to mm -hmm. mind. And that means walking, making this mm -hmm. a walking city, mm -hmm. making it a cycling city, mm -hmm. which regrettably it is not yet mm -hmm. even close mm -hmm. to a cycling <laughs> city. Uh, can you, will you, are you focused on doing that? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, one of the things that I want to highlight is that I do believe that it's important that we build more in the urban core here on Oahu. And we keep our country country. Um, building in the urban core helps what you were just talking about here, multimodal transportation. For those who are not familiar with that term, it means, yeah, making a city that you can get around without necessarily having to always use a car. And I think that's a good thing. But I'm also supportive of making sure that we encourage development in the urban core and recognize that we should be going up instead of out to take care of expanding population, meaning increasing the height limits and urban density in the urban core. Because I also want to make sure we preserve the beautiful open space throughout the island of Oahu. Uh, I don't want to pave over this island. I don't want to see yet another beautiful native Hawaiian valley taken over by asphalt and concrete. Um, let's keep our country country, but let's also maintain a healthy, growing, vibrant city the way we're going to do that is the way I championed it when I was the zoning committee chair and look forward to doing it if I'm elected mayor. And that's more urban development and increased height limits in the urban core. More, more, more plans, more vision. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that mean more money? Mm -hmm. Can we look forward to increases in real property taxes under <laughs> your administration? No, period. <laughs> I am absolutely dead set against increasing real property tax rates. Uh, that is an absolute no. However, this is important to understand. You don't necessarily, you don't need to always spend money. With so much of development, so much of growth and how we direct it here, it doesn't have to be dictated by the government. And this is something that I think is philosophically different about my candidacy and who I am versus a lot of other politicians. I don't think it always has to be government mandated. A lot of development where I was just talking about here, development in the urban core, is making sure that when developers come in for zoning changes, they're coming in for plans and permits from the city government, that the city government direct push them to build higher, build more in the urban core, and say no when they want to put asphalt all over a beautiful native Hawaiian valley. That's what a good mayor will do because that's what's important for our community, and we can do that without spending a lot of taxpayer resources. So take yeah. uh, camera one over there, Charles, okay. We're about out of time, okay. and tell the people, if you will, why you are committed to run for this office <laughs> and tell them why they should vote for you. Sure. You know, well, first of all, let me just thank all of you for watching us uh, here today. And thank you very much here, Jay, for inviting me to your program and your show. I want to convey to you that we live in a wonderful, beautiful community here on Oahu. My wife and I consider ourselves so privileged that we're able to be here, to have been raised here, to raise our children here. But I want you to know that I'm running for this office of mayor, not because I want to have the word mayor in front of my name. I'm running for this office of mayor because I want to preserve the beautiful aspects of our community for our children and yours. I want to make sure that we do not shackle the next generation with enormous amounts of debt and a horribly mismanaged rail project. 
I want to make sure that we keep the country country and that my children and grandchildren continue to be able to enjoy and see those beautiful native Hawaiian landscapes throughout our island and we don't pave over everything. I want to make sure that the retirees here in our community continue to be able to live here and not constantly worry about a government whose only attitude to mismanagement is raise taxes, raise taxes, raise taxes, and just keep on taking from the people. I want you to know that I care enormously about all those single moms who used to take their kids to Stadium Park or Kapilani Park, but now no longer can because they're unsafe. And I want you to know I care about all of those young people who did the right thing, graduated from high school, got a job, but are still enormously frustrated that they have to live at home because there's no more affordable housing here in our community. We don't have to accept the status quo in our government. We don't have to accept mediocrity. The way we can change that, the way we make things better, is the way our beautiful country has done it for over two centuries. And that's to get out and vote and vote for change that we deserve here in our community. And that's why I'm running for mayor. Thank you, Charles. Thanks yeah. for coming down. Say thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me over here. Aloha. We'll see what happens in four weeks. <laughs> Take care now. <laughs>